Kalimantan, Borneo, at the end of a long woodcutter's day. Clinging to the shaggy fur of its dead mother, the orangutan baby, just a few months old. It's the little one the robbers are eager for. The deadly shot is the only chance to get hold of it. On the illegal animal market, it is worth half the annual wages of a lumberjack. In every publishing company, decisions have to be made on the issue of turning manuscripts into books. Not everything which is sent to us is suitable for publication. This is our everyday life. However, something out of the ordinary happened four months ago. A manuscript reached us, which at first glance looked like any other manuscript. Its subject, a book about orangutans. In the first instance, we were not sure whether we should dedicate ourselves to the subject at all. But what happened then, after just a few pages of reading, was something we'd not considered possible. There was an unforeseen explosive power in the text and the photos. An assumed book on great apes turned into a book of tremendous implication. A book on the destruction of living space and of an animal species, also a book on the struggle of a very special man. I do not want to forestall too much, but the subject has moved us so deeply that we made the spontaneous decision to publish it. And not only that. Two weeks ago, I took a flight to visit the man behind the story. I went to see Dr. Willy Smith in the jungle. Dr. Willy Smits, founder of the BOS, the Borneo Orangutan Survival Foundation, is in fact a graduate tropical forest biologist who came to Indonesia from the Netherlands in 1980 to set up a tree nursery for tropical hardwood. His area of operation was Kalimantan. This is the Indonesian part of Borneo, or more precisely, Vanariset in East Kalimantan. After a few years, he made the acquaintance of a sick orangutan baby, which was vegetating in a cage. He took it with him, coddled it up, and soon had a second one in his care. Such strong affection developed between him and the two young orangutans that Vili was soon more interested in the scientific basics of orangutan raising, ape care and their release into freedom, than in his main profession as a proliferator of plants. Moreover, he'd become aware of the fact how many orangutans were kept under the worst possible conditions as domestic animals, mascots, or party gags in Indonesia. Those were depressing events which sped up his decision to dedicate himself completely to the protection of orangutans in future. His fame as an orangutan specialist quickly spread which finally resulted in more and more homeless animals. The $10,000 donation of an international school then allowed the establishment of the first orangutan shelter, the Vanariset Orangutan Rehabilitation Center. 
That was when the first three orangutans had come here and they had a very small cage here. And then we built this laboratory and this clinic and the quarantine. And after that it spread out more and more. Therefore, we couldn't do much planning. Sambocha lestari is totally different. It was planned directly for working with hundreds to 1,000 orangutans. Vannery Set grew into today's Sambocha lestari, a model project where orangutan protection is understood as an important partial aspect of the protection of species, environment and climate, and where it is put into practice. That is a small tree from the jungle and I was once in the jungle observing a sick orangutan and he had then in one moment eaten the flowers, the mauve blossoms of this plant and after 15 minutes he was already very much better. Later I once had a terrible headache in the forest and I thought, what the hell, I'll try it out. And lo and behold, within 15 minutes, my headache was gone. Since then, I've cultivated this plant everywhere. Now I collect the fruit here too, for planting more of them. However well orangutans can handle useful medicinal plants, it cannot prevent them from being prone to human diseases. No surprise, because 97.8% of their genes are identical to the genes in humans. Many newcomers suffer from infections. Hepatitis B and tuberculosis is nothing unusual. Therefore, first stop is the quarantine section. After a thorough medical inspection, the career in Sambocha is decided, as it were, depending on age and respective disease pattern. The babies, aged less than a year, are nursed in the baby station round the clock. If the physical development is positive, the next step is learning to climb in the climbing school. Here, the foreign visitor can come quite close to the animals because young orangutans behave hardly differently from small children. They are open-minded, curious, love nothing more than playing, and they're sometimes quite jealous too. This is Marlene, that is Phoebe, and this is Mile, the one who's clinging to your feet. And Mile says, Marlene has to get down, and now you have to watch out a bit, she might be jealous now. Exactly. But she wants to get up again. You have to watch out now that he's occupied with you. Which one would you like to adopt? Marlena, of course, the one who swung around your neck immediately. OK, Marlena is now top of the list. In connection with the name, Marlena, that would, of course, be something quite special for an adoption. Yes, and it seems that somehow she's taken to me right from the beginning. She didn't reject me. That's important anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there, look at him. He's laughing. He's really laughing. <laughs> In principle, all teaching and training steps depend on the amount of time the orphaned orangutans have already spent with their own mother. In free nature, orangutans are only mature enough to live independently after seven years. Of course, this is only possible when they are 100% healthy. But there are many sick animals in Sambocha Lestari whose recovery can drag on for a long time. This way, all grown orangutans who suffer from a hepatitis B infection spend their lives isolated from the others on an artificial island. Normally, anyway. And this, is Laura. this is Laura. Laura has managed to get away from the island. She's found a branch and she's really surpassed herself and has then used the branch to get over to the other side. Laura. 
Here one can see it. They haven't got that far that they can live in the forest on their own. They still run around a lot on the ground and they're still looking for contact with people they can trust. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay. Biar aja dia pukul. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all healthy animals from the age of three to five are first of all accommodated in group formation cages, which at first glance do not look particularly appropriate for the species. There are gigantic cages. Yes, we have six divisions there. And the orangutans are there in little groups with friends. They sit there together in these divisions. And after that, the divisions will be brought together. This way, we form a group of about 25 to 30 orangutans, which will then be released all at once into the forest. Via the halfway house station and the residential island follows the final step to freedom into an intact reintroduction area which is not inhabited by wild orangutans which will prevent territorial fights from the beginning. This tremendous effort immediately becomes comprehensible when one observes the symbiotic relationship between an orangutan mother and her child. During its first year, the baby is in permanent physical contact with its mother. Clinging to the shaggy fur, the journey goes over hill and dale at an unhurried speed. Even after a year, when the first fruits and leaves are being tasted, the orangutan mother will breastfeed her little one, for five years in fact. Each little excursion is watched closely. It is a long way into the world of grown-ups. Each step has to be learned which fruit is agreeable and in which combination too, which branch will still offer support and when is caution recommended, and how does one build a nest for the night. The extremely well-guarded childhood of the orangutan has a great advantage. The mortality rate of young orangutans is extremely low. The disadvantage, an orangutan female only gives birth to a young one every eight years on average which means she rarely gives birth more than three times in her life. Orangutans have the lowest birth rate of all land animals. It is exactly this which makes the populations so vulnerable to the smallest changes within their natural surroundings. All the more during large area clearings of the rainforest or during forest fires. For years, forest fires have been the order of the day in Borneo. There is always a fire in some corner of the island. Most of them are started intentionally. Their background, unscrupulous greed. Since palm oil has become a worldwide demanded economic good and the prices at the commodities exchange have exploded, the oil palm plantations eat their way into the jungle like cancer growths. The easiest, even though illegal, method to gain land for new plantations is the burning down of large forest areas. Also for the large wood companies, slash and burn is a long-practiced habit. Once the tree giants, which yield valuable tropical hardwood, are felled, the remaining vegetation is unhesitatingly burned down as wood of an inferior quality. This way, East Kalimantan alone has lost a forest area the size of the Netherlands within a few months. We are here in the east of Indonesia, here on the equator, and the biggest problem we have here is the forest fires. These fires cause gigantic damage. That is about 10 million hectares of forest. And let's have a look. In January 1998 the fires started, and then in February, March, April, 
May. 5.5 million hectares gone. What you can see quite clearly here on these maps is that in the beginning all of Borneo was green and then the deforestation started. They started properly in the 90s and now everything goes so incredibly fast that soon no forest will be left and everything will look like here, like burned forest. A living rainforest uses up gigantic amounts of carbon dioxide which can therefore not get into the atmosphere as greenhouse gas. There, during the process of photosynthesis, oxygen is released. If the forest is cut down and the peat which was gained from the boggy ground is also burned, then a larger forest area releases more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than the whole of Germany during one year. The protection of orangutans and climate protection are the two sides of one coin. For orangutans, forest fires are an apocalypse. If they do not perish directly in the fire, most of them will painfully die of starvation in the aftermath. Even the protected area of Sambocha Lestari is not immune to forest fires. At the speed of lightning, everyone able to swing a fire flapper or to operate a pump will rush to the flame front. The extensive fire is still not under control. There is silent horror everywhere. 